Hello and welcome. This is Community Formation, a podcast made by and for the Twilight Imperium community. I'm Brasford. And I'm Brox. And we are bringing you the voices of the people that make this community so unique. And Frox, what the hell are we doing here? You know, that's a uh, great question. Basically, what Brass and I wanted to do was get people on this show to talk about what's going on, like everywhere, you know, be it um, the the Community Place TI Discord, the SCPT Tournament, uh, Nobility Project by Philroy. I want to talk a lot about that. uh, You know, you sent me the link for that, and there is a lot to cover. I don't even know where to start, but hopefully Mm -hmm. we can figure that out for our listeners and they can get started where we did. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff. Like, we're going to play some Franken, hopefully, mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. the road. Uh, we're going to talk, hopefully, maybe talk to Daryl, uh, talk mm-hmm. to Big Al, someone. Mm-hmm. Everyone, we're going to get to know everyone in the community yeah. that's just, and, and dive deep into what's going on around the place. And uh, that's really what it's about. And um, we're just going to try to have a little structure to it. That's so, all get a little chaos going. Who do we yeah. have on today? Well, today, uh, we actually have two people I, I like to call friends uh drago thaxton mm-hmm. uh he's gonna come on here he, he's the guy who started on the scpt tournament stat sheet that's posted it's in the pins on the scpt discord and we're also gonna have it in the uh description of the show we'll have it down down below when the pod's posted and um also everyone's favorite uh diehard gif poster and cube player my son is also named port we talked to both of them and I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited uh, for everyone, and I was really excited to talk to them because it was awesome to get to know them better. Like, we, mm-hmm. a big thing that I think we both, and you, you really have put emphasis on this, is like, we want to know the people. This is about the people. It's not yeah. really about, like, you or me or mm-hmm. anything like that. It's about the game, Twilight Imperium, mm-hmm. and the people that play it. Emphasis on the people. It's about putting a spotlight on the community because the funny thing about the, like, you know, I've only been on the Discord for, what, like, eight nine months or something like that and you know started off just on the one and then now i'm like in 12 or i don't know how many now you know and it's there's a kind of just like splintering effect and you like find once you spend enough time looking around you find that there's these really cool things that are going on in a very niche very like removed corner from where a lot of people start when they get into the community and everything so we just wanted to have a platform that allowed people to have a chance to talk about their passion project their thing that they have going on because there's quite a lot uh it's a staggering amount actually so in terms of like yeah. yeah in terms of us having material and having people to talk to i think we've got plenty Pla- pla- you know, funny, it's really YouTube. funny. It's yeah. like our target demographic for this thing is what, like a, maybe a few hundred people, Dude. you know, mm-hmm. like our, our little, but, and it's, in, and it's awesome and it's incredible. And like the more we talk about just this podcept, podcast <laughs> as a concept, podcept. Podcept. it's a podcept, really, if you think about it, podception, we're talking about the podcast inside oh, the my, podcast, oh my God. but we, we keep coming up with more people that we have to talk to about this cool thing they're doing and like. We're hoping for like a bi-weekly release on this, but no promises mm-hmm. on that. Um, because uh, let's face yeah, it, you and I have lives. <laughs> I, I am not promising anything to anyone at all. I'm not. Well, I'm real good at promising things and then not yeah. keeping them if it's close to the end of the game. But, Classic. Yeah, you know, this is the beginning of the game, trying to hold true. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, yeah. perhaps maybe we should tell them a little about ourselves. And this podcast isn't about us, but we do not talk. Maybe. Of- we do not talk about Brassford. We don't talk about Brassford. We do not talk well, about Brassford. Guys, rule, rule one of the pod: don't talk about Brassford. We well, I'll talk about Brassford. <laughs> no, no, I'll talk about. I'll talk about myself. Uh, <laughs> I am a huge nerd and uh, musician, and I live in Portland, Oregon, a very strange, very funny place. Um, but I'm hoping to maybe live in a different place in. Portland, Oregon soon. That's kind of what's going on in my life right now, is that I might be fleeing this house and finding a different space, and we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens with that. But, um, but yeah, I love being a part of the community. That's, that's just pretty much what it is. Like, y'all are seriously, like, my friends on such a deep level, and I love and appreciate all of y'all. And, uh, 
if this platform is going to be anything for me, it's going to be an opportunity for me to say that to y'all regularly. So that's, yeah. So that's where I'm at. That's what I think. I, I, you know, I should have introduced myself second because that was incredible. Uh, so uh, I'm Frox. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I, you know, I do, I'm, I wouldn't say avid outdoorsman, but I enjoy like lots of outdoorsy stuff like hiking, um, mountaineering. I've peaked 14 14ers, like mountains over 14,000 feet in elevation. Um, I have DM'd in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition the same group for five consecutive years. Wow. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, only yeah. TPK'd them twice, but they weren't happy either time. <laughs> uh, let's see, I work at a bank. That's very exciting. I'm an assistant manager at one. Let me tell you, it's real fun helping old ladies balance their checkbooks. Um, I have a wonderful girlfriend who lives actually closer to Brassford than me. Um, but uh, as we've already recorded the board thing, as I s we'll go into more detail there, uh, I'll be visiting Brassford two weeks from oh. today give or take oh, yeah, dude. so that's pretty exciting you run across um, some yeah, four like locals travel, so. baby <laughs> oh Pretty man big. oh yeah, dude for, so i made an entire bar blackout simultaneously utilizing four loco one time oh god maybe do that for a little bonus it's, pie it's a story for another day right yeah. there but uh really you know i uh in, i joined the community i guess like in november just the time to sign up for the tournament and um somehow lucked into a qualifier win mm -hmm. and where I notoriously did not score a point accidentally and should have won on 10 and said one on the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. I was also one of three cabal wins. That was the first one. So, Very good. You know, shout out. Uh, other than that, I, you know, I'm just now really deep diving after like really getting in the community game and releasing that silly video. Um, <laughs> for anyone unaware, I made a marriage video mm -hmm. with Jadim Jedi and Big Al Cappuccino and my friend Eric Hahn, who's a uh, professional voice actor. And uh, that was my first, like, creative endeavor to release on the internet. Now mm -hmm. I'm on a podcast, and yeah. I really just am excited to get to talk to all these people who have really, like, given me a platform to, uh, like, just express myself, you know, in a, creative, in a creative way. And it's really cool, like, talking to other people who have, like, a odd interest in this <clears throat> board game, you know? Like, it's, 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 like, transcending me on a social level. I've never been this into anything yeah. and had a lot of people into it like I have been. Yeah, this game, yeah. and contains multitudes yo yeah, it is it is i mean mm -hmm. uh i uh i think we should go on to our uh other segment is is what i think we should do our uh as, as you can see this show we've decided to theme it around the agenda phase how cute how very cute of us so I think that's everyone's favorite part of the game anyways so like if we're gonna mine. make your favorite show it's, it's certainly my favorite part of the game it's certainly mine so uh, this segment is something we like to call Galactic Crisis Pact. Yeah, what's going on in the game right now? What's going on in the community game? We are, as of today, in game four, which is a Frankendraft game, which is uh, pretty tight, actually. It was a little overwhelming for me because I've never done Franken before. Uh, so it's like a lot of information to absorb and process and just like trying to remember the the abilities that each faction has is kind of a tall order but you know, you know that know. like really common photo from it's always sunny with the dude with like the yarn between oh, yeah. a bunch of different yeah, with things Char Charlie, like, yeah like like yeah. imagine trying to like like this is for the listener not you brass so much because sure. you're totally involved in it imagine trying to negotiate deals with people and like try to like see if this is a fair deal to you but like mm -hmm. you also have to reference this other page to see if like mm -hmm. is this actually better for them than it is for me because they for have sure. like something else like just now not to get too into the weeds about it but in the agenda like in the agenda phase someone got minister of commerce and we forgot they had artuno and they got a trade rider off but artuno is the nomad agent that lets you put money on them so they won 10 trade goods and we thought oh. they were only getting five wait i didn't even hear about that because i knew yeah, that the yeah, trade they rider that. yeah they got the trade oh rider God, and then they bro. put five dollars on artuno and everyone I'm forgot they had artuno i'm so embarrassed i'm so embarrassed because oh, i was like they got minister of commerce this. so every time they have neighbors and refresh 
Some of anyway, this gets yeah, no, this is this is why the community game's ridiculous. Though, yeah, because so I track all this. Yeah, so I feel I feel like we kind of like skipped over just a little bit. We were but we were gonna also I'm sorry, guys, describe. Just... No, we got ahead of ourselves is what we did. But we were also yeah. gonna describe briefly like what is community game. It's a uh, well, it's called Community Play CI. It's a server made by our guest on this show today. My son is also named Bort, and we're going to be talking in more detail about like the creation of the server and everything. But it's essentially just you're on a team of people, and your team self organizes into controlling one faction, and you have to figure it out what are y'all gonna do uh you know like there's captains on each team that actually submit the orders but you know each team that's that's what's cool about it is that it's literally just this huge social experiment and each team self-organizes and figures out how they're going to decide everything i think uh i think roses are doing like polls a lot i think they're being very democratic about it from what i can tell but also, I can't see in their team channel because that would be cheating. So that's the other thing, too, is that there's like a lot of intrigue that's going on because there's stuff that you just straight don't know. No, it's um, it's really fun. And the other really cool part about it is it's not just like how you present like your faction or like your deals. It's also how you like present your your character on there. Like um, Zippelin, uh, for those who don't know, is on my team and he like posted this photo of this blob fish it's just like this mush <laughs> fish and he was like that's a blob because my team's name is blob the builder mm -hmm. and like we all decided like okay well that's our faction mascot now so we photoshopped a construction helmet onto it and that's what blob the builder looks like now and like we've all changed our names to 80s glam, glam rock mm -hmm. band names or songs it has nothing to do with it we just thought it'd be fun so like it's yeah. just it's just fun like what was it in game two everyone on one team name was plant and if you listen to SCTP, mm -hmm. scpt podcast as well sorry to rehash some things but mm -hmm. that's like the the big thing it's like that's a lot of fun you know you don't have to go in there and strategize you can go in there and bullshit and post pet pictures or talk songs mm -hmm. and then in between the deals too like it's like a social yeah. experiment almost that's exactly what i said yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but no, it's just a great place to hang, you know, and uh, we're going to be talking more about it. So I think we actually should uh, get to, uh, well, I mean, we were going to talk about the Franken factions that were, yeah. So we're going to talk about this really quick. So what does the blob have going on in terms of like mechanics? Like what are your, some main abilities that are, that are going on? Well, uh, so we have a uh, black market forgery, you know, the NRA promissory note. Uh, we actually, our very first pick was the Latani Behemoths. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they have Planetary Shield and Production Ugh. 2. I love that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we just Jelly. got Transit Diodes, too. It's about to get real spicy. Um, we got the Jolnar Hero, um, the one where you can replace all of uh, your your techs on your tech board. Uh, the Mahakt Agent. Uh, you also, as part of the mm -hmm. Franken Draft Draft Planets, and according to Fingolfin, we have the second best planets. Um, we uh, One of our faction abilities is Edict, where if we win a space combat against someone, we can take a token from them and put it in our fleet pool. But we don't have the ability to use their commander. That's an entirely different ability, uh, as I can learn. Yeah, another team has that. Um, we only have, we, we drafted three commodities, and they rated us, and this is hilariously, disgustingly solid all-rounder, yep. much like a blob. Yep, yep. You're all around like a blob. Is what you are. <laughs> it's you're just blobby. It's just what you are. So, uh, my and, oh, one other thing, we have fabrication as well, where if we have oh. two fragments, we can make mm -hmm. a relic, or mm -hmm. we can uh, spend a spend a relic as a stall, split a frag as a stall to get a token. Sorry, yeah, that was one okay, thing that wasn't listed here. Apologies. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. No, it's no, it's mm -hmm. cool. It's I'm glad that you put that in. I'm I'm very mm -hmm. glad. Uh, my faction, I mean, first of all, this is, like, not an ability or anything, but we have Kaluin on our team, so you're just done. You're just... It's over. Gosh, I've never negotiated with done, anyone like him. Dude. Oh, dude. It's he's, unbelievable. Homie's on another level, man. He's, uh... And actually, this is a fun fact. Has nothing to do with anything. Kaluin and I have the exact same birthday. 
Isn't that weird? Wow. What yeah. are the odds, actually? Yeah, no, I don't know. Like, and someone who's better at math, incredible. tell me what the odds are. You know what I mean? But no. <laughs> But no, really, DM us, please. We need to know. No, for, for real, for real. But but my faction, we uh, we essentially called ourselves Zayu. Uh, the actual team name is Zayu Fast, Zayu Furious, and it's all Zayu, baby. We got the Zayu. We got there's other things going on. Right? But there's other things going on, but Zayu is like <laughs> the main thing. You know what I mean? We got Zayu. We got Super Dreads, um, and we got. What else do you need? <laughs> what what, well, what you know, else do you need? One thing you do you know have, I mean? buddy. Like, oh, what? Oh, pillage. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no pillage. Yeah. pillage. Yeah. But we don't have any. Know why I know but we don't. Pillage. We don't have any pillaged trade goods yet, though. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. yeah. But well, we could. You know, my team is your neighbor, and we yeah. have Rear Admiral Farron. Yeah. And we also have um, Salvage Ops. Can't use those because <laughs> you're gonna pillage us. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. It's absolutely Great. hilarious. Absolutely Great. hilarious. Yeah, awesome. uh, so yeah, if you want to like check out what we're talking about, um, yeah, I mean we can drop the link to you. You know, hit us up. I don't know. You can you can find the link. It's Community Plays Ti. Come and check it out. Yeah, we'll yeah. put a link in the thing. And I do want to shout out one other team. It's uh, my team is also named Bort. Oh, of course. Who, which is no affiliation with the person we're having on later, other than being kind of a fan club. My in real life buddy Truth Truth's on that team, so I thought I'd give them a shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and transition to our next segment. Uh, we are going to be doing our interview with Drago Thaxton, homeboy. Uh, it, it's funny, it, it was this thing where we just asked him to be on, and now we think we're just going to have him on as much as we want. He's, uh, he's quite the homie. So uh, this tournament-focused segment is something that we like to call Articles of War. Drago Thaxton, our uh, stats homie, uh, he is here to talk stats with us and tell us what's going on with the tournament from a numbers perspective. How's it going, guys? Yeah, we're doing good. It's going well, man. Going really well. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little daunting, but we're getting there, and hopefully you can let us figure out what the hell's even going on with the board game we're uh, talking about. <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, I know probably less than anyone else just because I've done this, and uh, I know that's the assumption is the other way around sometimes, but um, lost in the sauce, I think, is what I uh, become. <laughs> Yo, preaching to the choir, man. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, I mean... Um, it's it's so crazy. I literally just said, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna start just tracking these things," and uh, and here I am. And uh, it's become a I don't know how many how many tabs is this thing? I haven't even counted it to be honest. I haven't probably over twenty at this point. Wow. I don't know. Let's just um, say the only time I've seen more tabs was in college. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so yeah. how how far back does like I mean your collection go, or were you like collecting stats from? earlier than when you started keeping track of stuff um i prob so i when i got on board it was uh it was like i think i posted the first one on the sixth um and so i think at the sixth i pr i was bigger behind probably i was behind like three games at that point so uh i kind of jumped in early um i had seen like some other person posting a few things and i was like oh i could you know easily just fill in a chart oh it was the fantasy um the fantasy points game Okay. And I literally saw that they just had pretty much a bunch of stats for the fantasy game, and they were doing some kind of regressions and stuff. And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I can totally uh, expand on this." And you know, people like options, so let's uh, just give them another avenue here. And um, honestly, they were that sheet helped me a ton in the beginning because um, now I'm doing it all manually, collecting the data every game and. Uh, it's a lot longer <laughs> to do than when they, <laughs> when they were doing it uh, essentially in the beginning. Um, so it's, it's gone from just running like the tables and stuff and uh, the functions and all that to full on collection and stuff. The biggest was uh, the, um, what's it called? Objective card tracking. That was the biggest. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. That was that the fairly late, didn't you? Yeah, that one was done probably towards. That was actually started in the prelim round. 
I, so, uh, I, I definitely asked you about that, I think. No, I asked yeah. you about uh, first-round leadership stats, and you actually went and updated for that, so thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's... Yeah, oh, uh, custodians? Not leadership, though? custodians, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so th that's easy. I mean, that's literally just skimming the video until you see the tokens gone and <laughs> marking down what's there. there you go. Um, a lot of it is just skimming. But yeah, the, the objective thing, originally, I, I don't think I'll ever get back to it. So uh, mm -hmm. I'll say that here, uh, going back and saying <laughs> what the f when the faction scored everything and what round and what phase mm -hmm. and because that was going to be, I had help for that for a little bit, but uh, I don't blame the people that <laughs> had uh, uh, abandoned shit for, for a moment sure. because that was, uh, yeah, you had to watch each video like six times and that yeah. could get pretty crazy. It's, uh, it's, oh, it's intensive for sure. Um, this just popped into my head, but I mean, do you have any plans to like maybe link up with Daryl on all this like new stuff that's happening with uh, tabletop playground and like the, uh, the coding? No, actually. Um, <clears throat> I'm oh. not much of a coder per se, but, uh, sure. I'm sure he could probably work something in for like access to data. Yeah, I mean, either access to data or, I mean, like, you know, where I'm just going with this right now is, like, a full-on integration where it's, like, there's a button where you can say, like, generate report on, like, this game and then it just... Because, because like, I just thought of it because, like, there's that cool new stuff where, like, when you click the objective, there's that automation where it automatically moves you up a point. So what if there was a way that that got logged and was, like, the ghost of Korea scored lead mm -hmm. from the front or, like... I oh, there, I, I mean, I, it's like, there's that's something... probably a late stage thing, I think. Like in just the development, stuff, I mean, just stuff to think, think about, you know. What I mean? mm. No, just, for just sure, stuff to yeah. Think about. Unfortunately, no one pinned this stat thing, but there was a, a person I can't remember their name at the moment. They were um, towards the end of the prelims, putting up like the games reports, and somehow they were getting data from TTS. Oh, and, and it, it was, was like, it was uh, it was very delayed. It was like. You had to wait, like, five hours or something to get it, yeah. right? Like, I but it remember. was, like, charts, uh, like, actual, like, point... It was it was about the game specifically, so it was actually saying when points were scored, what points were scored, and a lot of really cool data. Wow. Um, my heart went booning when I saw <laughs> it, but uh, uh, it, was, it, it was very game-specific data, which was cool to see, um, especially for those players that were in those games, because you got to, like, kind of... It was a, a, a good screenshot of what had happened in a game. Yeah. Which is kind of what everyone's going for. I know Big Al's probably... Yeah, I know he loved it, too, because he's all about the the marrow, as he says, right? The marrow. <laughs> no, all yeah, you definitely got to get to the th get into the thick of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Real quick, Drago, I meant to ask you this earlier. Um, what kind of got you into, like, statistic statistical modeling in general? Is that, like, what you do for a living, or um, um, so, is this just kind of a passion thing? Uh, the project itself is totally passion, and my actual interest in... Um, all the stuff is more passion now, but I was an economics major in college. Mm -hmm. And um, that, if anyone listening to this probably knows, it is mostly um, a statistics degree and an, an Excel degree. You learn how to use Excel <laughs> amazingly. Um, yep. And Excel's become one of my favorite programs to use. Um, I actually use Excel and just copy and paste all of that to Google every yep. time I update because I just don't like using Google Sheets yeah, uh, for its functions and stuff. So No, I, I literally feel like I'm at work when I uh, open this tab up. I have to like, like you know that dog where it's like looking at the cupcakes? Like yeah. that, that GIF, that's how I feel when I look at us Excel yeah. spreadsheet. So thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, uh, no, but yeah, so it was uh, just doing that. Um, I, I honestly, anytime <laughs> a thing comes up in my life where I... I start putting together more than like three or four numbers and I can see it going deeper. I usually just open an Excel sheet and plan it out from there because it's, it's a, way of a good way to organize your thoughts. And I, I made a, a TI build calculator the other day for some asynchronous games that I've been playing. And you just put in whether you got Sarween tools, war funding, resources, trade goods the uh, for the planet. And then all of a sudden it just tells you how much you can build, how much you got left, That auto updating everything. So That is sick. That is so, sure. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's super helpful for um, that's, I mean, yeah, like you can, once you kind of figure out a few functions, there's a lot you can do. And um, incredible. But uh, my current job is uh, some statistics stuff. I'm a mm -hmm. sales operations uh, analyst for uh, a company local over here. And uh, it's it's been, yeah, uh, I've moved from a sales position to this. So I've been able to flex that uh, stats muscle a lot more 
in here. I mean, you put it on your resume when you applied for the new position, right? Oh, you yeah. Show them this doc. Yeah. Like this doc. <laughs> no help. Yeah. Look, look at the this colors. Would, it would scare me out of more jobs, I think, than um, get me jobs. Yeah. Oh, sure. my God. Hilarious. So, I uh, think there no. might need to be an epilepsy warning when you look at this for the first time. <laughs> but uh, You scroll too fast. But I was wondering if, uh, now that we got to know you a little better, uh, since I think, uh, Brass, I don't know if you're into this, we were thinking about maybe having you on pretty regularly, hopefully every episode to kind of dive in uh, deeper. I want, and, uh, dude, I just want to have guests on guests. Like, this show is, like, so not about Frox and I, and it's about Drago, and it's about Bort, who we're going to have on, and it's about every single other person is what it's mm -hmm. about. I would be happy to. Hell yeah. Oh, hell love yeah, to, buddy. Love to, love to, love to. Fabulous. Well, uh, I guess we should probably maybe actually look at the numbers a little bit. Yeah, uh, I have the let's, let's let's up here, and yeah. you want to you want to point me in the right direction in what we're uh, looking at here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the most interesting points uh, to begin with uh, in putting all together would be on the all draft tab, all draft all right. data tab. All right. I'm there. Uh, so, by the way, we'll put a link in the description to mm, um, to cool. the sheet so everyone can kind of follow along if you know they're as awesome as we are. <laughs> Uh, so this this page uh, just shows where uh, the top part shows where uh, items have been picked at every how many times each item has been picked at each individual pick one through eighteen. Um, there uh, there is a bit of a caveat. Obviously, picks six and seven and twelve and thirteen are essentially the same pick um, because that's a snake draft and that person. And this is the uh, multi draft format, right? Like, yes, exactly. Uh, the, the yeah. traditional one. Okay, just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure. Um, and uh, so those picks are essentially the same. Uh, I just went with what the order the person picked it because maybe there's some psychology there where, hey, I subliminally want to get that before the other thing. And um, usually, and sometimes people have picked the, the six picks super fast and then waited on the seven. So um, there's still can priority I, there. Go can I it. just look at this outrageous outlier of uh, uh, my home? For my qualifier, the Mama's <laughs> drama at forty-two picks at draft yeah. pick number one. That's 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 almost ha that's almost exactly half of the qualifiers, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more more so. Um, I, I'd be interested to see if they uh, they might. I mean, uh, maybe like a fan favorite for like a, a an invitational game of slices from like past tournaments put together would be pretty fun because oh, Mama's drama would idea. definitely be there. Oh, it's in the greatest hits. Is, is <laughs> no, no, hits. it absolutely yeah. would. But not, like the only the only real flaw in Mama's drama was having Ebera right next to MR because in my Cabal game it was just a pain in the ass to uh, even get yeah, through sure. and do anything with it. But at the same time, like it's just too good. I mean, you even you even can combine pick one and two for Mama's drama. That's sixty three. Wow. Picks out of 80 games was picks one and two. Never got, and then you add the 10 on pick three, 73. Okay, yeah. so seven more games. It went later out of wow. picks one, two, or three. Oh, wow. Um, but, uh, sorry to get you distracted from that. I just uh, just happened to notice that. Uh, mm. But what else were you going to say about the all game data? You're more of so, uh, oh, yeah. speaking as to when things get tracked. So, um, oh, getting tracked. Yeah. So uh, just picking, this is a just overall tracking where each item went and then it's broken up into slice order. And then the factions, um, factions is obviously probably a little skewed too, because there's mostly been this whole tournament's been, uh, faction pools and not so much the whole previous format of like banning and anything can get in at any time. Um, so that's a little skewed, but you can still see kind of like a trend of where bigger factions would go early. SAR got picked 10 times, pick three, that kind of stuff. And it, it kind of tails off, obviously, because it's not available. Um, but Who, the real... Who's your favorite faction, Drago, and where were they picked? Oh, uh, so coming into the tournament, my favorite was going to be NRA. Um, but then oh, I got man, my hands same, by the way. on Mentak in my qualifier game and uh, fell in love, like, right oh, away. Um, yeah. they, they're they just... Yeah. Cruiser 2, Mentak, and... Uh, for life at this point. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm right there with you in the Mintac gang. I think NRA still holds near and dear, but I can't. I haven't even gotten a win with them, and I've gotten a win with Mintac. It's actually kind of wild. Mm -hmm. uh, Very yeah, NRA, yeah, yeah. I've won one game personally for NRA, and uh, yeah, crazy stuff too there. But no, no, for sure. 
Uh, maybe there's like an overlap in like their skill sets that sings to people. I don't know. It's just confirmation bias speaking. But I anyways, mean, cr cruiser two factions I think might be just more or less my favorite at this point, um, just for early game stuff. But I know, I know um, someone and... who's very happy to hear you say that. Me too, actually. <laughs> uh, there's someone who maybe bases his entire identity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not naming any names, but it may have cruiser two in it or something like that. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, sorry I keep getting distracted. I, we oh, just like fine, to know yeah. about the people here on the show, so it's Absolutely. always nice to to interrupt about that. So we're but slinging around slices uh, factions outliers like Sar being third pick ten times, which yeah. looking at that is actually more than is double the uh, yeah. other faction. And you can and then you can third. see in that first column next to each name how many total picks each of them have, and um, they're at thirty nine, which. I'm looking real quick. Forty Argent Flight, forty six. Poor birdies. I mean, they get picked over and over again, and I don't think they have one of the the lowest winning rates. I think out of every faction. Uh, well, it's too bad because I think they're really cool. Seven percent win rate. Oh my rate. god. <laughs> Meanwhile, That's... Mahat sitting at thirty four percent win rate. I, I think it's got to be the ignoring of the construction card. That's that's what I would think. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 we don't have that tab open. Maybe mm -hmm. we can dive into that next week. Like why Argent is losing, <laughs> but um, that, that, that's just my kind of conjecture yeah. from what we're seeing here. Like it must yeah. be, mm -hmm. they're not so, setting up their PDS network. Oh, sure. totally, totally. We uh, we had a split session game where I was playing Argent and I was like in a lucky enough position to be able to score while still taking construction, and I did it like two or three rounds in a row. I was just like, I need. The PDS. Yeah. I need them. Mm -hmm. I need them. There's like no other way to no other and way. And then Jadim Jedi took my home system. Anyways, moving oh, on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would love to uh, transition. Like we've been talking some nitty gritty, but I'm really curious to hear from you, Drago, if that like what are like the larger stories or lessons or whatnot that are springing from the numbers when you when you look at them. Like what really stands out to you is notable. Um, I'll say when I did my two drafts, I I really focused on what uh, this draft tab was, I think, is the most value in terms of actual, like, usage for the tournament. Like, anything else is just cool to look at. None of, I mean, what one person does in one game will not dictate what another person does in another game. It's all just cool to look at to me. Um, but when I was drafting, I used this draft tab to see, like, okay, really, I'm at pick X. What what's a good pick what's the consensus pick here mm -hmm. and then move forward from there um and it, i mean i i think it helped me it it, it, it kept me it kept me collected during because sometimes i I've, i got a little flustered in the beginning i know that like because i think i was pick six for my qualifier game so i'm you're sitting there picks one through five like what do i do what do i do what do i do mm -hmm. i don't want to mess up my first pick my first two picks because i'm sitting here for the next however many and i don't want to be stuck with the the bad end yeah. And picking what you're good at, picking what's the best available, but also still is in your play style. So looking at this, I was able to, and that's back when it was just, you know, just Mama's Drama. And obviously, I, I might have even gotten Mama's Drama. I can't remember. Um, I'd have to look real quick. But uh, it was, uh, that that is really the main thing I, I pulled mm -hmm. from any of that. Um, cool. So, so. All right, so you're drawn from this, like, all draft data, which is just, like, what er everyone has done. Uh, I'm curious if you have, like, a smaller subset of that data of, like, well, this is what the winners of the games did. Like, mm. like the winner of the game, what, like, more often than not shows their, like, slice first or, like, whatever it is. Oh, see, mm. I didn't even, that's a great question. I never did that. <laughs> well, we're we're here to give you work. That's like yeah. exactly why we're here. I uh... honest, and what's great is uh, the way I've set up the data. That's not a hard thing to put in at all. all right. That is literally a pretty easy thing to do because right. I've called out who the winner is on every line on top of what order things were picked. So that's time. Um, well, uh, that's time. Drago. If uh, you happen to get that together, like not. No pressure, oh, obviously. Yeah. But if you have to I get that have together, that by we... the next one. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, have that next one. Or I could even, if you don't have time to meet with us next time, I can drop that just straight in the like a link to like that image. Absolutely. In the description mm -hmm. of this video afterwards. Uh, 
But man, I, I really, really want to thank you uh, for doing this because actually I did a lot of my prep work uh, pouring over your spreadsheets uh, oh, for really? my drafts. And uh, like if you go back and watch my prelim, because this was kind of in its infancy because I did mine on January 15th and you started on the 6th. Uh, my prelim, they'll actually say, oh, man, I really love Mintax draft. It's because I really poured over this. Like, I looked at, like, the data and the value sets, and it really um, helped me prioritize things. So I just really want to say thank you for it's, that. It's a good, like, I mean, yeah, it, the, it has a few key things that can help people make a decision. But in the end, like, it's, it, like I said, it's just for something really cool to reflect on at the end. I think at the end it's going to be a great picture of what this tournament was and people – you can like go back and just look at it whenever, because I'm now I'm never gonna take it down. I might end up exporting it and seeing if they want it. Matt and Hunter want to keep a file on hand. I don't know what they Word. whatever, but like because uh, yeah, it's just like a great. If I could figure out how to make a cool infograph of just like at the end, just like mm -hmm. just uh, bar graphs and stuff, just like a one image of like key things because they back. put on a great tournament and to give just like a cool picture of like the whole thing. And it culminating in one person after a, we're at 121 games, I think, right now. Yeah, something. Like yeah, that. And there were 614 in the contestants, right? Something crazy. like that. So, it's wow. crazy. That is insane. Yo, all so, I'm saying well, is we got to bring back uh, Ska Baron to make the infographic. Where's, where's my <laughs> homie, Ska Baron, bro? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it's what the people want pretty colors, bars, and flashing mm -hmm. neon lights. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Drago, it's been a absolute pleasure to have you on today and i oh, can't yeah. wait to uh bring you back on next week thank you so much for helping us out with this little uh, passion project that we got going on here my man absolutely thanks for having me guys appreciate it hey. and welcome back we are going to transition now to this segment that we like to call unconventional measures and this one is all based about, uh, it's all based on like the alternate game modes and all the weird stuff that's going on in the community I want to get really experimental with this segment, is, uh, is what I want to do. So, Frox, why don't you tell me what we are talking about today on this segment? Well, um, earlier we talked about the community game as a franking game, so I thought it'd be a little interesting to um, kind of dive in and see kind of how the game gets started mm -hmm. um, and kind of talk about it conceptually a little bit and then talk about like tile placement a little bit and give a couple of beginner tips. Mm -hmm. I actually reached out to Mantis, um, who is played quite a few franking games apparently so much and, so uh, that the and now a finalist yeah, yeah. by the way that was yeah. that was a wild game actually um wild yeah uh the chat was popping off during it oh, <laughs> oh dude chat was oh, the best Lord. chat was the best and the, the commentary you know is okay and everything but no, no, chat like chat was oh, popping Hunter, off Hunter so and hard, EJ dude. had like this great yeah. energy that like i think chat was feeding off mm -hmm. of it was mm -hmm. wild it was a very special game uh I, if no, you can still go and watch the vod and watch the chat and everything i would highly recommend it yeah no uh, i think when we hopefully when this episode is released you should have a couple of days left Word. to pull that off um but so franken what is it well as you could tell from an earlier segment, you kind of grab all these little pieces of factions and put them together. Uh, specifically, the community game is normal Franken. There's also powered Franken, where you have an extra faction ability, you draft an extra one, and you toss an extra one away. So how do we get to Franken itself? Well, you draft three blue tiles, two red tiles, um, and you also draft separate faction abilities as they pass these bags around. There's six of them. And each team starts with a bag. Or not team player mm -hmm. starts with a bag in this particular instance. There's like and 30 has... pieces in each bag, right? So yeah, it's, it's like, it's, very it's, kind of, it's very overwhelming. But, you know, yeah. it gets easier as you go along. Yeah. But you take two out each time it gets to you, like two pieces. Like the first time my team got it, as I said earlier, we picked a Latani Behemoth and we picked a blue tile. Um, I think it was a Biz Freya. And then we passed it on and we picked another two things and kept going until the bags were empty. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't overpick your capacity on things. Like once you have um, mm. four faction techs, you can't, or faction abilities, I mean, mm. you can't um, draw anymore mm -hmm. because you're going to get rid of one later. Um, and then like another kind of deal with it is you would like hate draft or anything like that. Like pick <laughs> stuff you don't want other people to get, but yeah. you're not planning on using. Like stuff like that. Um, but like, that's kind of how you do it uh, and simplicity. You even fact, you actually even start, you pick your starting fleet and you pick mm -hmm. your starting technologies. It's actually insane 
like every piece and component on that page you're picking out and i thought mm -hmm. that was really fascinating a real fun thought experiment the draft was like the best part of the game oh totally i, I feel so far yeah no um, it was it was awesome it was uh it was yeah. so much fun and uh there was this whole joke of like like okay everyone go home now you know like <laughs> it's uh, it's done right like who no, won the excited. draft yeah I'm really excited to get like our own kind of like single player, you know, single player franking game going. Where we're not on teams, uh, I think we've talked mm -hmm. to some people about getting one going. We'll talk about them. Maybe more, more to come on that. Yeah, yeah. But the 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 next kind of step in the whole setting of the game up, and it seems to be the most popular. Where I've even actually done this in an async game. It's called the Mantis Draft. And this is how you do: it. you take the five the top five tiles you drafted, mm -hmm. uh, you put them in a bag and you shuffle them, mm -hmm. and you start at Mechatol, like the the first ring, like you do in a normal bag draft as stated in the rules. Um, but then you roll a dice, mm -hmm. you pull a random bat random tile out, and you have to place that one. So your supernova might be right next to the back at all. Word. Thankfully, you have a mulligan. You can use that to re-roll and pick from the other four components and put that there. But then you move into a ring and you either the left equidistant or next to your home, and then left and right. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is like essentially kind of how you start playing your Franken. So I highly yeah. recommend on the TTS server, well, maybe mm -hmm. tabletop playground. I guess it's kind of the online TI server now, more than the TTS server. We shouldn't call it that. But they uh, hop in there and get a prank game. They're always one going, always one going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, great. Uh, yeah, press. So we are going to transition to another segment, and this one I'm actually very quite excited about, and uh, it's one that I like to call Brassbird's Mega Meme Center is what it's called, brother. We're going to be... Yeah, we're going to be looking at That's some memes. That's you settled on? Yeah, no. It was your idea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was nah, no. I would go with something that's Come stupid. on, no. He's Frox is trolling right now. Is what he's doing. Don't listen to him. He's trolling. So what is this segment? It is me saying that these are the top five memes of recent memory. Uh, but it's a top five in no particular order. So you know, like when I you know give credit to the memes, you know, it's whatever. It's you know, don't get tripped up on it. It's, it's top five in no particular order, but we're just going to get into it. Meme number one. This is a GIF meme of a Pokemon battle, but this is an, ama this an, so ama much. This is an amazing story from what happened in this Franken community game where one team rifted through Cormund for the Custodians and my team's got Zayu, Agent of the Nefish, and he, like was going to be a shoe in for the Custodians round one. But Top Sons, they rifted into the danger zone, and they got it. Um, yeah, it was very sad about that one. So I had to make this this gif of sadness and tears. Oh man, is what this one is. I'll tell you what. Oh, that was yeah. incredible. I had to walk away from my desk at work when you posted that. <laughs> Just so you know. I'm pouring one out for my homies, the custodians that are supposed to be scored by Zayu, agent of the Netfish. Uh, you, wow. you have to admit, the presentation when they were rifting was A1. Oh, it was incredible. All right, moving on to meme number two. This is another one of mine that is kind of a joke, that is kind of a, just a silly one. And it's because everyone's hating on Stroder, and in the async server that I recently joined, even the TI4 game management bot did not think that Stroders were valid or supported, and that just made my blood boil. You know, it makes my blood boil when people don't like Stroder frocks. It makes my blood boil. Um, but yeah, so I had to give it the, the Arthur fist uh, of anger. Oh, man. Oh, I love that one. Don't so try it. Don't... LeBron even posted an Arthur meme one uh, one time, like in the past year. I died. Uh, oh, dude. Great it's, format. It's rich for memes. Mm -hmm. Is is mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, it absolutely is. No, that one, oh, it's too good. All right, we're moving on to meme number three. I believe this one is from Teaspoon. Another one from the async server. I believe the meme channel is called the Obligatory Memes Channel. Uh, but this one's beautiful. Which he made, by the way, when you joined the server, just so you know. Wait, he literally really? created that. Yeah, no, like, when you and I joined, like, on that same day, he's like, well, I guess I need to add this, and he tagged both of us in there. Oh, man, I, 
Yeah. Man, I didn't catch that. That's hilarious. That's oh yeah, dude. You're like we apparently hilarious. have like some kind of reputation or something. It's weird. Wow, well, something, something like that. Uh, so we got this one, Bane saying, and they took my slice, but he's actually Sar on Malice and Mechadol with two Imperial points. They're fine. That's, that's that. They're fine. And we got meme oh God. number four <laughs> coming right up. Goondock with the treatise on the evolution of the terminology. Bonus point, turning into guac, turning into knobbies. I don't even I think know what knobbies are. Uh, neutral objectives, right? Oh. Objectives? Wait. Well, I thought it was nugs also. Where's nugs on this? Nugs Rwise was coming up with that. No, that was Hunter during the one that this past Sunday, the semifinal Mantis was in. By the way, watch that bod. Great yeah, bod. Watch that bod. 10 out of 10. That's where they brought up the nugs. And the mean nice. ROIs were talking about relics for dipping sauces. It was fun. Okay, that's where it came from. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. gotta love this one from Goondock on Meme Town. Uh, very, uh, I was I surprised think... to see not very many emojis on this. I was very surprised, and I had to add my emojis. I sent this, like, like photo to my parents i think i have this animorphs at my house like my parents oh I'm trying to see if they'll dig it out so i can like put it in the background yeah this week oh totally yeah. no uh if you don't then i'm gonna be very angry you should be i'm frankly. gonna be i'm gonna be pissed is what i'm saying <laughs> all right and meme number five this one's from phil sage and this <laughs> i don't know why it's so funny dude <laughs> it's so good i know why it's funny because yeah, yeah. i can imagine phil saying it. <laughs> that's why <laughs> you know long car soda if that's a tech i'm not picky man oh my god uh this one this one's just so good oh man all right and that has been brass birds mega meme center a good top five to start off with some strong contenders so here's the most important thing about Brassbird's Mega Meme Center is that you must ping me with the memes. If you want the memes on here, it's going to be a top five, so there's going to be some competition. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, ping me with the memes, and we'll, we'll show them. We'll show them is what we'll do. We have our main segment coming right up. This is what we like to call, Who's the Speaker Again? Who's, who is the speaker? Today, you know, I was thinking we could get maybe somebody who has a son <laughs> whose name's maybe named after them. We're not sure on that, but his son is also named Bort. We're not sure who or what Bort is, Word. but it's, his son's also named that. Maybe we'll know yeah. later in this segment. Maybe we'll find out. What? How you doing, my man? I'm doing what? great. How are you guys? Hey, doing good. We just had a great conversation with Drago earlier. You are our uh, second guest to have on. And um, I'm just so stoked to be able to like spend time with people in the community and really get to know the, the people behind the profile picks. Uh, Drago's a tough act to follow. Like they're great. I'm a big fan of Drago and all the work that they do. And like I don't know, playing with the in the semis game was really interesting, right? Like getting to know them. Like I like I'd never played with them before, obviously, so. I, like, I, uh, it's cool getting to know people like in the community that you don't know and i think that's part of what makes this project so neat oh for sure and that guy really uh do dives into the stats but like it's really interesting to listen to him talk if you even have like tangential knowledge of like the tournament and its format and uh, he's he's incredibly well versed in in everything um one thing i didn't know is he had to watch every game or he had a volunteer do a few like one of the mm -hmm. things is that a volunteer would have to watch the game like five or six times but uh yeah, did, did you know that like that was involved? I thought maybe he was just like like doing the kind of the stats thing where someone would talk to him a little bit. No, yeah, I I guess I don't know what specifically he did to pull those stats. I assumed he had something better than just like watching every game. That's wild to me that he actually went through and like pulled all that information just manually. Like the dedication. Yeah, jeez. Dedication so, for real. I I think that's super cool that like someone's willing to compile all that stuff and get all this information. That's a really nice community resource to have. And like I I have a bunch of questions, but I probably shouldn't ask it because like <laughs> you just had a podcast episode, <laughs> so like we'll yeah. just do Drago's episode again. 
Yeah. Well, Drago's oh, actually going to be on every time. Uh, we're going to have like a little stats corner with yeah. him. We're not stats kidding. Yeah. Oh, are you, I thought that was a joke. That's no, great. We, no. no, we like talk to him so much that it's like, just come back. Yeah. Just, just come back. Yeah. No, please, yeah. actually. Yeah, I mean, we're hoping not to fall in love with you again, Bort. But like, you know, every day we wake up and we do it. And we, we're in this loop. It's like 51st dates. So you just, yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. having it happen with us. All right. So I spe- do you feel like I'm dating you guys. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Maybe a throuple. Well, which one of us do you yeah. choose? You don't no, have to choose. But... It's a it's a throuple, man. <laughs> so um, no, I have a seriously, story I will share with you all after this. Anyways. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and talk a little more about Bort, the man behind the profile pick. Can you uh, give us a little history about like I don't know when did you join the community? When did you start playing TI? Uh, I so I was trying to get off Twitter, right? I was spending too much time on Twitter back good, in like twenty twenty. Yeah, like I, you know, just like it just took up so much of my time, right? And I was trying to quit, and I really needed a sink for all that online time that I was spending. Mm-hmm. So I, I fell into SCPT because I think it was the first. It wasn't a codex at the time, but Dane released. I think it was like preview stuff for Prophecy of Kings and released mm. like the new Diplo card. Oh, I think the new construction, okay. that kind of stuff, right? And so I, um, like in that there was like, oh, Space Cats, Peace Turtles, right? This podcast that is about the game and so like i yeah like started listening to that got way into it joined the community and i mean like the rest is kind of history right got really totally. involved and so like i've just like completely repurposed all that time that i used to spend on twitter and just like make stupid memes and <laughs> like spend time well like you were the first person to say anything to me and i'm sure a lot of people with the welcome to the party pal diehard uh, Jeff. i mean like that's like you were like the gatekeeper uh. Dude. Almost, you know, like you know, with the lowest standards possible, you just had to show up, dude, right? I do, dude. I do that GIF all the time now, or Jeff. Oh, it's, it's a classic. Like I didn't even realize time, it was so good. Oh, it's perfect. I think I stole that from another server. I can't. <laughs> that. Oh, that's the best. That's the whole point, right? Like you know, nothing's original anymore. But we, we don't need to get into that. Uh, anyways. But yeah, man, we're uh, so a little bit about you, I guess, the person too. Like, where uh, where do you live? Like, what part of the country are you from? You, you sound like you're in the U.S., of course. So I, I am in the U.S. I live in hmm. Omaha, Nebraska. Ooh. Love Omaha, buddy. Love it. Oh, oh do you my actually? God. Yeah, oh yeah, no, we uh, one of my buddies, like we uh, we did a bachelor party where we leave. I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and we left here and we drove all the way out to the Badlands, Mount Rushmore, and all that. And like we spent a lot of mm. a little bit of time in Omaha in the pass through and. It was incredible, and then one of my good friends from playing World of Warcraft actually lives there, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, oh, no, awesome. I uh, always visit. Yeah, I, I, I try to visit at least once a year. Yeah, oh, I had no uh, idea. That's wild. Yeah, next mm-hmm. time you're here, we should meet up. Oh, definitely, dude. That's I'm 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 visiting Brass. I'm not kidding. Next month. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. My my girlfriend moved from here out to uh, Tacoma, Washington, and I'm flying into mm-hmm. Portland where he's at. So. Oh yeah. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. want to say, go Huskers. Is that is that right? That's yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, got it, got it. Yeah, I mean, nailed it, man. Thing. Absolutely nailed it. Oh. Oh, cool. yeah, man. And then um, in our lead up to this, she said, do you have a, like a kid? Do you have a couple kids or? No, yes, I have two children. I have a three year old, and then I have a nine month old. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. How do you have time to 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 uh to uh, I can't say I'm trying not to cuss but to post as often as you do with a freaking nine month old man? Holy moly! Well, it's it like as far as posting because posting is so low effort. Like you that's true. Post more, you're up in the middle <laughs> of the night feeding a baby, and it's like oh I can just like troll SCPT right. Speaking of posting, it's your turn in our async game. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I we've been right. it's been for like 24 hours. I've tagged you like nine times. I know you get tagged a lot. Wait, have you actually? No, I've only tagged you once. <laughs> Has it been 24 hours? Oh my god, now I feel yeah. terrible. I have oh, seven shouldn't. notifications in that. <laughs> how well, many games like, are you in? Uh, I think five. Two of them That's I how many I'm in. in. Oh, are you uh, serious? Two of yeah, mine yeah. are real, though, is the thing, right? Like, So two of mine are, like, uh, someone dropped, and I just jumped in to cover for them. So, like, mm-hmm. I feel like I don't have to try as hard in those. <laughs> so three of them are real, though, and one of the ones that I'm in with you, right? Like, and that's yeah. a great game. That was a fun one. There is a oh. fun one, I should say. Oh, yeah, no, that one's wild. So uh, mm. just so the dear listener knows, uh, myself, Brasford, Bort, and then we roped cages mm. into this one. And then we also yeah. have uh, the literal async father, uh, Holy T.I. Oh, yeah. in it. And, yeah. uh, whew, man, that one's uh, already looking to be Mimi. And Galen, thank mm. you. Sorry, you had mm. said that. Yeah. But yeah. Galen's great. The only, like, so I really like Galen, but um, the big experience I have with Galen is playing Sidereal Confluence with them. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, so now it's fun to actually, like, play some TI. It's great. There you go. There you go. I've never, I've never played Sidereal, actually. Um, that's, like, a big thing, kind of, like, a little subsect of our community. 
uh, we'll probably have to have a whole ep on it on yeah. here. Actually, I mean, it sounds with you. it sounds fun. I love that one meme where it's Team Fortress Two, and they're like, "Okay, n- <laughs> nobody convert cubes," and then the guy's like, "I've done nothing but convert cubes for three days." <laughs> yeah, it's cages, isn't it? I can't. I can't I remember. Just made that. Oh uh, really? I, it's just gonna. I think we're gonna have to work that one into a future into meme corner. Oh, of course. Oh, by the way, Bort, we have an entire segment devoted to memes. That's incredible. On this yeah. show. Oh, yeah. No, it, it happened probably, I guess, oh, yeah. uh, five, ten minutes ago, easily. It's it gets lead into this. <laughs> we haven't quite got the format down, but yeah. For no, sure. like, we're leading from the memes to the ultimate meme, and that is talking to... Yeah, our son yeah, is yeah. also named Bort. Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, like, do memes work really well on a podcast? Like, do you just describe them to people? We're, uh, we're, we're actually we're sending smoke out. signals across this yeah. country in a in a concerted effort. We have people across the country sending them. Yeah. And when this podcast airs on drop every five minutes, we're going to be sending the signals. So oh, yeah, okay. so that makes sense. So to mm-hmm. yeah. so to reference a like very topical um, thing, if you ask how is it going to work, I will say it won't. <laughs> Is, is what I is what I will say, and I will use so, that to lead us into the very important topic. So we're here to talk community community game with you, Bort. Oh, uh, I don't know. It, like I, I see this is the real tragedy. Is lately I just haven't been as involved in the community game, right? Like I'm just the nature of things. I started a new job recently. Mm-hmm. I like completely switched industries, and I'm on to more typical hours. And so just because of that, I just, I've been so much busier. I don't really have time to, like, sink into the community game. It used to be, I, my old schedule was that I would work seven on, seven off for 10-hour shifts. And wow. so because of that, I would have, like, seven days in a row off, and I could just, like, you know, I, I ran pretty much the whole first game. I took yeah. until, from Phil at the beginning, which was su- uh, completely invaluable, right, keeping the thing alive. Oh, totally. But then after that, like, I was able to run the whole thing on my own, right? And, it, like, with some bumps along the way. But then, like, now that I've started this new job and stuff, it's just I have not been able to follow it nearly as closely as I have in the past, right? And so, thankfully, like, other people have gotten involved, right? Like, Finn has been really helpful oh, for this spring game. Like, Finn is a machine. MVP. Oh, I'll say oh, no, Finn's I'll amazing. Say it I'm in an MVP. async game with him, and he's actually quite the player. Mm-hmm. Let's, Some... Like, his elimination in the tournament aside. <laughs> I felt really bad for him in that. Like, I don't know. Like, that was That, that, was, was, that was luck, man. I don't think, like, that's, that's the luck of the draw. Like, it, yeah. like, I'm getting eliminated by Micmac Moose in a game, and, like, I couldn't do anything about it. I'm Argent, he's Nalu, and um, Expendable hit a rift, lost both his starting carriers on the rift, Ooh. and then <laughs> and Nalu eats in his slice and gets oh. mechs out early, and I'm just like, well, I can't do anything. And then he yeah. top decks Master Plan, Unexpected oh, yeah. Action, and all these other things. Yeah. I, I don't think elimination should be a... Uh, barometer for how good of a player you are oh no not at all i mean sometimes especially depending on who you're next to right like yeah i mean if you're next to l1 or necro or something right like sometimes they can just come into your slice and obliterate you nalu i guess now is kind of scary with that yeah well they can be slapped early which was my plan but you Mm -hmm. can't do that if they have two slices um yeah yeah. you're kind of stuck at that point for sure but but real quick sorry to circle back but uh no worries what, what kind of industry are you in working seven on and seven off? If you don't mind me asking, of course. No, no, no. I, well, I worked in um, a clinical laboratory, like a hospital for, or a hospital laboratory for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. I started there when I was 19, and I, mm-hmm. I'm a medical technologist, right? So yeah. I like do laboratory testing. And stuff. But the, like healthcare is like, I don't know, it's, it's, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys about how awful American healthcare is. Uh, I, I date someone in the healthcare field. <laughs> uh, I completely understand. Oh, that's awesome. What do they do? Uh, they're 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 a, uh, they're an occupational therapist, um, and their focus is on hand therapy, which is why she moved across the country, because there's only oh. 7,000 of them in the world, and she wow. has to work on them for three years. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. and like I, we actually work in the, like, where I live currently is, like, the hand capital of the world. The very first ever hand transplant happened, like, a mile from my house. That's um, a So this is kind capital. of where you aim you... Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that and the first artificial heart ever actually happened here. Okay. Um, but uh, but this is where you end your career. It's not where you start. So. Sure. But sorry to go on a little diatribe there for you, but yeah. Well, no, no that's cool. perfect because I just recently ended my career in healthcare and I switched. Yeah. Industry. This sounds made up, but I like I'm basically a biochemist, right? That's kind of what a lot of my training is, and so I switched over nice. to an industry that um, like you know, um, like fake meat, right? The company oh, yeah. I'm for now, they they make the fake blood that goes into fake meat. Yeah! That's a bit, oh, that's huge. Oh, that is so huge, actually. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's incredible. So, oh like, of God, course man. you do that, I mean, by the way. Make, of course you just Bort making shit up, man. Blood. 
<laughs> like I know, right? It sounds fake. It sounds like I'm completely like just making shit up. But no, oh I, I that is my career now. I guess it's wow. very weird for me too. That's incredible, man. Put that slap that wow. on your resume. Yeah, no joke, no joke. But it means I have normal hours now, right? I work nine to five, and I actually like our place is kind of out of town. So I have to mm-hmm. drive a ways, right? And so, mm-hmm. like, I have a really long commute now, which is annoying. And just because of all that, I just I have hardly any time to focus on the game, game, which is a real shame. I like, like man. It's, well, it's you're about so to find out, out about it in real time from us. <laughs> <laughs> what, for Game 4, how this Franken game is going? Yeah. Oh, well, do you mean this disaster? No, I'm just kidding. It's going fun. It's a lot of fun. It's fun. Is it a but, disaster? Uh, I don't no, know. No, not at all. It's incredible. Time. It's absolutely I incredible. no, I think it's it's really cool how it's turned out, and uh, because before we did this, I've never played a Franken game, and Same. I have... I've never even wanted to. Yeah, well, you I mean, didn't want to. Well, I mean, no, I've always I actually interested. remember when we were talking about making game. Sorry, Brass, you good? I that, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Uh, but uh, I like I was like I, I want to be a GM if we do Franken. I'm not interested at all. Like that's what Word. I was talking to you in the suggestions channel. Yeah. A word. Well, well, yeah, no, now that you say that, I think I do remember you saying that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. No, so, like, I, Franken is always something that I've been interested in trying, but it's such a mess and it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of time, is my understanding, is because, like, I just, you move slower because you have to constantly account for all of your abilities. It's not just, like, a neat package, like an individual faction in TI that you're yeah. really familiar with, all the synergies and stuff, right? But then also, there's, like, rules issues, too, right? I mean, there are some things that just break the game and don't have clear, concise rules answers, right? You kind of have to wing it. Sure. And so, like, uh, but the GMs are kind of a nice asset for something like that because they can just make rulings, right? You have, like, people there to just decide things and make those sort of decisions about how abilities work and stuff, right? So I think this is a good format for it to learn it. So I was excited to do Franken and, like, experience it for the first time. I almost, like... I, I wasn't able to, but I, I really wanted to kind of like hand the server over to someone and then just be a player in game four because I thought it'd be fun to do. But then like, oh man, I just didn't have the time to interact, Word. which is a, such a bummer. Word. Uh, I might do it for Frog of War. Oh, if, totally. If we ever get there. Oh, I don't no, know I, when that would ever happen. So I, I think you should. And I, I would like to talk about Frog just a little bit uh, in terms of like the possible future for the for the server. And I, I want to keep it under the hat. I'm not going to say too much, but um, both Bort and I are in an experimental Frog of War game on the async server. And we just had a really hilarious moment where he found me by showing up adjacent to me. And we had had a conversation previous where it's like, oh, if we find each other, like, I'm going to I'm going to freak out. And then I freaked out and like, understand me, like, oh, we're like freaking out. And then Bort's like, oh, my God, you're the first person I've met. And then I was like, ha ha, you're the last I've met. (laughs) It's under, dude, I've covered like, I I don't know exactly how big the map is, but I've covered either like a quarter or a third of the galaxy. And I've not met anyone besides you. That is so So, uh, funny. That is so hilarious. Just so you all know, I'm in the rubbernecker role and I can see everything. Oh, that's so great. Okay. Yeah. You, like the master channel where everything's going. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there's actually, they have two separate Discord channels. You know how they have like the PBD, one, yeah. two, three, so on and so forth. You all are like 35 and 36. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm in 37 with you all. So I see like everything before I even scroll down to go to like our plays. Interesting. And I, I, I'm trying to not spoil myself sure. too much. And I, so I don't even really have anything to share with you all, but. For sure. Yeah. So yeah, we were talking about like Teaspoon decided some stuff with that game, and I like I think it's really interesting. The site like I really like not knowing where Mechatol is. I think oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, what else was there? The um, how we, strategy cards you don't necessarily know what's been picked. Yeah. So going last actually is like you actually know which strategy cards have been picked at the end. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. guess did he did he change that halfway through? Because he he has mentioned what has gone unpicked, I guess. But I guess you don't know who has what. Yeah. So that's so that's the thing is that. There, there's an element of uncertainty of not knowing who has what, and then he's got the thing going on with the dummy players, and I had to like convince him, like, no, we should know what the dummy players have picked because those are popping off at like random times. But this is like, oh, is that why you changed it because you convinced him? Yeah, I, I had to twist his arm a little <laughs> bit. I was like, if these I, uh... secondaries are going to be random, I want to know which ones are random. You know. So I'm kind of like also like I'm just like thinking here. Wouldn't it be kind of fun if like if no one knows and no one talks to anyone? You have like a kind of a telephone component where like the GMs like add a rule every round, but like not everyone knows it and they have to like only who they're t- near can like find it. Like because like how you change the dummy player rule like halfway through or something. Oh, well. I don't know. 
LOL. Be, that would be that would be absolutely sure. hilarious. Just because it's already ridiculous, anyways, right? Like, sure, sure. I like, initially wanted to spring it on people that way and be like, okay, divide people into teams. Here's mm -hmm. your home system, and you like you don't even know the rules. It's just like figure it out as you play, and you learn interactions and things as things happen. But I think that'd be, like, that'd be like if it was a video game that like that works so well in that format, I guess because yeah, but we already have like a baseline knowledge of TI. And I think like that would frustrate some people if like the normal interactions you expected yeah, so that's, didn't happen. So that's the thing sense. about Frog is that it is and probably always will be a controversial uh, kind of thing. But I and we uh, talk controversy on the show. We're not we oh, don't shy yeah. away from it. Totally, yeah. totally. But I think that there's a lot of potential for some interesting stuff. Like even just the whole idea of like I'm planning my round one, but. I had no idea where Mechatol Rex is. That completely changes the calculus. And for me, it was really, really fun to... I completely agree. I'm 100% oh. on the same page. So cool. Yeah. Such a different and cool way to play. Yeah. I, and, uh, this is the thing where okay. I wish people would give it a chance in some way. Like, you know, people who are dead set against it or don't think they'd have fun with it, right? Like, I think a lot of times in stuff like that, you know, if you just give it a shot, like, you might end up enjoying it more than you want. I feel right. like it's worth it to give it a fair shake. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. No, definitely like me with Franken. Like, now I'm addicted. Although I am a little upset uh, with the Franken in one sense. We planned our entire thing. Uh, we got uh, Rear Admiral Farron, uh, the barony commander. And then we're like, oh, we'll get salvage ops too. We're just going to be printing trade goods. Our neighbor has pillage board. Uh -oh. And it's Brassford's freaking team, of course. Uh -oh. The Forever War continues. <laughs> can't even control it. <laughs> So like we can't even use half our faction ability, but like that's Word. you know that's 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 fun though. Like 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 he was saying, like you you plan you have these big plans, and then just you mm -hmm. learn one thing. Like, well, you know, I, uh, I I got one good piece of advice from Jade when I was asking like I've never done a Franken game before. Like, what's some good advice? And Jade just said, draft good. <laughs> and I feel like we that's what we we got pillage. If I was in a Franken <laughs> game, I would simply draft good. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. Wow. God, it's so easy so easy but uh to circle back i guess uh so like i just really want to thank you board because without you we wouldn't actually with the community game happening this wouldn't be happening right now and like i actually yeah. say that very sincerely and directly because that's where i met brassford uh, yeah. we were on the imperium team together um and i know you could literally read all of our chats there's no way you kept up with it because him and i just kept going for hours mm -hmm. a day but uh <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, no, I, that was absolutely incredible. I could only read, like, you know, certain snippets of stuff, right? I would kind of check in and, like, get caught up on maybe, a, like, a few hundred messages at a time, which sounds like a lot, but it's not really in Discord because messages are so short. You know, just check what people have been talking about recently, right? And the Empyrean channel, I think even looking back at it, you can see that it was one of the most active ones, just the way people were coordinating and, like, trying to, like, do whole stories and stuff. And then that was the funniest thing. I think it was because of you guys that we had to start a whole separate channel for, like, lore stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because you would post, like, huge backstories for all your Oh, moves. my boy, and Biotic, and dude. Biotic, oh, dude. My God. Oh my god, he lays oh, down dude, the he, most he fire so, shit, so, what, what motivated me to like even start typing that stuff was like that he just, him and Mantis actually really enjoyed the Bob the Builder stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Mantis messaged me, like DM'd me, it's like, oh, and you didn't just kill off that guy, did you? Like, you didn't <laughs> actually do that. Like, I was like, hold on, hold on now, there's plans, there's plans, don't worry about it. I, I could just imagine, like, like Ma Mantis on the bus, and he's like, I'm reading my stories right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. I don't oh, know, man, that's I, awesome. Yeah, oh, no, it was, like, this is absolutely incredible. Like, it's, uh, like, and I, I just really want to thank you, and, like, uh, the server that we're recording this in is actually a server where, like, the Bat Captains, we all hang out, yeah. and every Thursday we, we play games together, and, like, one person's in Japan, one person's in, in Sweden, and, uh, like, he's 3,000 miles away in the U.S., so, like, we according time zones, I meet at 11 p.m. my time and stay up until mm -hmm. 2 mm -hmm. in the morning, usually, and uh, we play games, and I, uh, yeah, I mean, 12, my Friday's my 12-hour day, by the way, so, yeah, nice. I, mean, I like these guys nice. that much, so I, I have you to thank for that, so seriously, that's it's awesome. I mean, that's so great to hear. I mean, that's kind of my experience with the community, right? I mean, like, I joined here, and I became more and more active, and I got more and more involved, right, and have met all these different people, and, like, I don't know, there's tons of people in this community who I am happy to consider, like, friends, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, like, I, and people who I hopefully will be in touch with for the rest of my life. I mean, people who just, just you meet through a board game, right? It's yeah. bizarre, yeah. but, and just, I don't know, they're awesome. Like, a ton of people who are just so nice and, like, fun to be around. And, genuine. And just good just people, yeah. Genuine, genuine good people, for real. 
No, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, what, Jazz announced that he got engaged, like, on the community game server? Like, it oh, was, yeah. Like, he told us before it happened. Like, he was so excited. <laughs> and, like, he shared it with us, like, a week in oh, advance. Man. And he's like, guys, I just bought a ring. We're like, Jazz, yeah. buddy. Like, that's incredible. Like, it's like, we're, we, and so now we're, the community's planning his wedding. Community plans Jazz's wedding. Oh, uh, hilarious. That's actually community game. New seven. server. No, no, uh, brand new yeah. server. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're picking the floral arrangements and everything. I mean, it's, we've got to. I think we have excellent taste. Invite. Are you going to all be in the wedding party? Oh, that's the thing. No, we're not allowed. Yeah, no. There's no way, right? No. You're not allowed to we're, go to we're the a bunch of, Dude, we're a bunch of no. DGens, man. Yeah, yeah come on, man. Like, like yeah. have you seen how many apple mimosas I've put Dak while we've been watching this? Oh, uh, this is true. <laughs> Sloppy spilling them everywhere. Oh my gosh, dude. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I really would like to, uh, you know, start, start wrapping up the, the whole thing and just by saying that it's uh it's a beautiful thing that we have going on here in the in the ti community um the whole purpose of this show is to just take a spotlight and just shine it over here shine it over there because everyone's got so many cool things going on and there's so much to celebrate there's so much to learn about um i'm so glad that we had you on as our first speaker board i mean yeah. like yeah like like Frox was just saying, like, we kind of owe a lot of this to you. Our friendship started, and really the Bat Captain server started as the Empyrean channel. We were just treating that like it was our own server and our own little hangout and everything. Well, and that's yeah, we absolutely what I wanted out of the community game is for people to, like, be able to step in, meet other people, kind of experience the game that way. And it's just, like, it's awesome. I'm really glad. That makes me really happy to hear. And, like, I, that's almost, like, I don't know. The community game has gone in a completely different direction from how I, I expected it, but it's not like, I don't know, I don't want to say that it's, a, like, it, you know, I think it's kind of great that it grew out in a way that I didn't plan for or anticipate, mm. right? I mean, from the game one, it was initially, like, just immediately going off in directions that I didn't expect and didn't plan or account for, right? Totally. But I think it's, like, it really took on a life of its own, but, like, and see, that's why I feel, you're like, oh, it's because of you, right? But it, I don't feel like it is because of me, right? It's because of... The people who stepped in and were like, yeah, I kind of want to participate in this goofy, crazy thing to actually try this weird team-based mm -hmm. board game experience. Like, it's everyone together getting in and getting involved and helping out. And, like, well, you know, Wecker signed up as a GM, right? And yeah. did a bunch of work on Game 2. Like, just a ton of time and effort planning and organizing things. Has done a ton of work on a bot for to just play a goofy <laughs> Fog yeah. of War variant for this game. Um, I, I think of all the people who I was like, hey, do you want to just try this team variant, right? And I just sent the link out, and people were like, yeah, and they just hopped in and started playing. I mean, that's that's awesome. It's beautiful, yeah, man. I can't take credit for that, right? Like, Okay, like, all right. Well, you, you can't, Listen, but, like, mean... you know, it's, it's you know, the chicken and the egg kind of deal, right? You know? So, yeah, but, well, I just still want to thank you for it. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know really where to go from there, but, um, you know, I, I think Brass and Board, yeah. I think it's time that maybe... All three of us just have a have a nice cup of uh, Big Al Cappuccino now. Yeah, don't you think? Yeah, I but, think uh, I think it's time for our closing segment, uh, and we like to call this one "Let's Chill with Big Al Cappuccino." Or thanks. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Going on an adventure, whether a Twilight Imperium life as a whole or an individual Twilight game, is all about embracing the unexpected. This is true for community plays TI as well as we enter our path of exploration and discovery from little knowledge seeking to gather up information and finding our path through the challenges i encourage us to stay in touch with our emotional selves although fun and excitement are positive and often at the fore of mind introspection is important as we grapple with all our two human fears and apprehensions our anxieties whether they relate to this behemoth of a game the interpersonal relationships knowledge of the faction we're playing, or just our current losing streak. These are not negatives, and with the right attitude they can become positives. Let them, and indeed every adventure, be an opportunity, an opportunity to grow as players and individuals, to know more about ourselves and learn about others. Through these challenges, this adversity, we grow. And triumph is not the big W. The triumph is climbing the mountain together win or lose, making it to the end together, because in the end, this is a social recreational endeavor, all about people. 
enjoy all our adventures together and may all our dice roll hot.